Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I've got six Sauvignon Blancs. Actually, I've got five and a half Sauvignon Blancs in front of me. Uh, we'll get onto the half when we get to uh, the final wine of this uh, sextet. Um, it's the third Sauvignon video I've done uh, done this afternoon, and uh, to be honest, I'm getting a bit sauvignon out. Let's just see whether these uh, these six will uh, bring my uh, Sauvignon taste buds back to life and uh, or oh, leave me thinking I need a beer. Well, actually, most wine tastings leave me needing a beer, but uh, we'll get on to that at another point. Let's get on to the first wine first. Um, so we've got, I, I think, all, all these five are 2011. The first one I've got is 2012. It's Stonehaven uh, Sauvignon, uh, made by Cape uh, Point Vineyards, in, um, and it's a 2012 vintage, as I said. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's actually from Cape Point. Uh, Cape Point is, if you know your uh, South African geography, there's Cape Town, and then there's this bit that goes downwards. Uh, there's Constantia on one side, Cape Point is over on the other side. Uh, but um, that's where they are, they're based, but it doesn't say whether this, this fruit is from there. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. Young, sappy, uh, this is slightly nutty edge that I think is to do with um, uh, the sulphur that they put in prior to uh, prior to bottling. Uh, so it may be that that will, that will disappear with a bit of swirling. Uh, it doesn't smell like it's going to be hugely aromatic. Um, and um, it smells okay, but um, not great. It's funny, it's one of those wines that um, um, hasn't got a huge amount of flavour. Um, but uh, has got this dry, sappy character uh, going uh, all the way through. It's like a stony mineral character that's, uh, that, that, that's the main thing rather than big fruit uh, and big aromas. Uh, and uh, as a result of that, so as I was saying, it doesn't smell of all that much, but um, what, I wouldn't be surprised if I pa it passes what I call the empty bottle test. In other words, you put a load of wines on the table, which one gets emptied first if there's like five or six of you? I uh, wouldn't be surprised if uh, quite a few people went to uh, have a little bit more of that. I might have some more of it later, but it depends on how good the rest of the wines are. Let's see how wine number two is. Fox Gordon Sauvignon Blanc 2011 from Adelaide Hills in Australia. It's um, like lemon and gooseberry, and uh, maybe some of the gooseberry's gone. Uh, it's it, some of it's gooseberry pie as well as fresh gooseberry. Um, it smells like it's uh, it's not going to be hugely in your face style, but as a result, as I was saying with the first one, not showy, but um, maybe all the more drinkable. It's okay, uh, but uh, it's not great. Um, there's a it's, it's strange, I think about the, this one which didn't smell all that promising but tasted better. Here it's almost the, the other way around. Here when I come to taste it uh, after those quite attractive aromas, uh, it just feels a little bit jelly-like. Uh, simple, honest, tasty, but, um, but let's move on. Uh, wine number three, uh, back in South Africa now for Seven Springs Sauvignon Blanc 2011, which I think is their second vintage of, uh, I've done there. 2010 a couple of times in videos this is the first time I've come across their 2011 give it a whirl well there's something here that almost reminds me of spearmint um, there's uh, the, the citrus edge there's uh, maybe a little bit touch of green apple in there but um, it's uh, yeah the minty herby character that's coming through as, as strongly as anything doesn't smell like it's going to be uh, massively um, overwhelmingly ripe and concentrated or anything like that but um, it smells quietly confident and that uh, herbiness that really comes through um, quite an imprint of that uh, surrounding it is this um, it's strange it's it's it's, it's a mixture of the, 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 the citrus but there's something a little bit more uh, voluptuous in there maybe nectarine or something like that I like it um, and um, I'd be interested to see um, I mean, I, one, of, one of those wines that it feels like if I, if I watch it, I wouldn't be surprised if a few extra nuances emerge from it. Uh, Favourite so far. Um, maybe if I've got a problem with it, the finish maybe just lacks a little bit of uh, precision. Splitting hairs, it's, it's pretty good. Right, uh, in Chile now, I'll be interested in this, this pair, because um, they're both made by Erasuris. Um, and uh, I think they're both the same alcohol. But uh, first one is uh, their, their single vineyard Sauvignon Blanc 2011 uh, from Casablanca, which is uh, where uh, Sauvignon probably found its feet first in uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in in Chile. And uh, so let, let's compare this with. Uh, well, I'll tell you where the next one is when I get to it.
Well, I was mentioning a like, nutty sulphur character on, uh, I can't remember which of the previous wines, was it? The Stonehaven. Get some of that character coming through. Uh, here it's a full of richer wine. I mean, this is, I think this, these two are the highest alcohol, 13.5%. Yeah, it feels like it's going to be a weighty wine. Uh, and there's like a creaminess and, uh, um, yeah, maybe a bit of custard apple in there. Uh, maybe a bit of pear, very ripe pear, peach, uh, but we're tempered with um, a little bit of herby citrus restraint. <laughs> I'm getting, you know, I can't remember last time I had a strawberry Mivialoli, but there's, there's something about that character here. So there's like a sweet strawberry edge tinged with vanilla, which are unusual tasting notes for a Sauvignon Blanc, but... I get that here. At the back, uh, there is still a little bit of that nutty sulphur going on. Um, I'm in, in two minds about that one. It's, uh, I quite like its richness, but uh, it's a burping. But uh, I, uh, I almost want a little bit more subtlety in my Sauvignon. It feels like um, quite a big, rich, weighty wine. Nothing wrong with that, but I think if I'm wanting Sauvignon, I'm wanting a little bit more poise and presence. But another one to keep an eye on, because um, I've got a feeling that that's going to uh, change a bit, quite a bit over the next couple of hours. Uh, wine number five. Again, Erasuris, uh, and again, single vineyard Sauvignon Blanc. But this is their Aconcagua Costa um, vineyard. So we are uh, pretty close, actually, the Casablanca and uh, Aconcagua Costa. Um, I mean, uh, the, the, what Erasuris did, they've, they've got... Um, They've got their main bit of uh, their red wine vineyards higher up the Aconcagua Valley where it's uh, warmer, drier uh, and uh, far more suited to red wines. And, uh, but in the last few years they've been planting close to the coast where it's a bit chillier and uh, they can make, uh, I, I, I've done some, I think I've done some Chardonnay from, from there. Uh, I think I've done some, have I done some Syrah and Pinot? I can't remember but um, anyway let's see what the Sauvignon's like. Now this feels like it's got higher cheekbones. It doesn't feel like it's going to be quite as rich and round as the one before, but um, for me the one before was maybe a little bit too rich and round. Here it, there's, um, I, I get still some of that nutty sulphur character. I don't know whether that's a, a consequence of uh, the, the winemaking style and what they're showing in when they're bottling it. But um, there's a, a more lime and lemon uh, herby precision here, which it looks good. And that just, yeah, that has a little bit more poison uh, elegance about it. Still rich, uh, so you can still feel the weight of, uh, of, uh, of the wine. But, um, yeah, it doesn't feel quite as um, flabby around the middle. Uh, not that the previous one was flabby around the middle, but here it feels a bit more lean and sleek. Uh, and, uh, yes, I prefer that. Um, not by much, um, and uh, but, uh, yeah, definitely prefer it. I like it. Let's find out what uh, wine number six is like, um, because this is, I was talking about five and a half Sauvignons. This is um, Donna Dominga, um, Donia Dominga, um, Sauvignon Blanc Viognier um, from the Colchagua Valley uh, and 2011 vintage. Give it a whirl. I'm not quite sure what the idea of the, the blend is. I imagine that uh, they like the aromas of both, but they want the Viognier to uh, give the Sauvignon a little bit of cojones. Uh, and um, it's uh, the aroma is, uh, of the, the Viognier is, is, yeah, it's lifting. You get the herby, uh, bright edges of the, uh, of the Sauvignon, and the Viognier is just like giving it a little bit more bike pump and pumping them up, making it a little bit more richer, peachy, uh, apricotty, uh, if that's a word. And then when you come to taste it, it's just a bit flat. Uh, there's no spark of freshness there, really. Um, it, it feels like it's all aroma and, um, yeah, it's flat. Um, I get this jelly character, simple. Um, yeah, I just wonder why, why blend the two. Um, it's almost like blending, oh, I, I like lobster and I like beef. Uh, no, no, maybe not. Maybe that's a bit extreme. But uh, if, if Viognier is the lobster, something that, that, that's quite big and, and, and fleshy, uh, and then you, you put it with, uh, with mussels. Uh, I mean, they both come from the sea, but uh, uh, I'd have preferred it as a straight Sauvignon or as a straight, uh, straight Viognier. But, hey, uh, I have to say that uh, my opinion of Sauvignon Blanc has not been hugely increased by uh, uh, trying these six wines, uh, but uh, the best of them are good. Uh, the rest of them are... they were okay. Hey, see you soon.